Law, and I'm here this morning with Kim Storen from Storen Financial Group. Hi, Kim. Thanks for agreeing to talk with me today. Hi, Lisa. Thanks for meeting me. Sure. The reason I wanted to uh, meet with you today is because a lot of my clients are calling with tax questions, and I thought, I'm, I'm out of my league here. I need to talk to a tax expert. So uh, will you let me pick your brain for a few minutes? Well, it's April 16th, so normally I'd be done with taxes, but not this year. No, you're just getting into the thick of it, I yes. bet you. Yeah. Just start. The, uh, one of the number one questions that I'm getting from people are about these extensions. Like, are we okay as far as when to file? Mm -hmm. that's, been, um, that's been fully decided. And so the deadline now is July 15th. And so originally there was a lot of miscommunication or they didn't realize that they were going to extend everything. And so the filing date was still going to be April 15th, but you didn't have to pay until July 15th. They have moved everything to July 15th. So that's a little bit weird in that your tax return is due July 15th. Your first quarter estimate, if you're a small business owner and you pay estimated taxes, usually your first estimate for 2020 is due April 15th. That's now due July 15th. Your second estimate is June 15th. That is now due July 15th. So okay. it's going to be a little tough for people this year because your 2019 taxes are due, your first and second quarter are due, all July 15th. And wow. then your third quarter estimate is now due um, September 15th, the name, the same. Okay. They did, they pushed back all not-for-profits, trust returns, the FBAR. We have people that file the FBAR, which is the foreign filing, mm -hmm. and that's all July 15th. Okay, but if people <clears throat> aren't careful, they're gonna have a big, big, big tax bill on July 15th. So they probably need to budget yeah. a little bit or project. We've kind of been telling people that it'd be nice if they just stayed on the same schedule where you, you, know, you went ahead and paid your April 15th on April 15th and pay your June 15th on June 15th, um, just to avoid all of this backlash. However, um, some people are out of work and they don't have the money to pay it right now. No, it's true. That's or, their true. Business, or their business is shut down. Some people need to wait until July to even see what they need to pay because it's so unusual. You right. might have zero income for three months. The other question I'm getting from, in fact, from all directions, email, text, phone, is these stimulus checks that are beginning to drop oh. into people's accounts. They want to know, is this really, you know, free money or is this going to be credited against my next tax refund? refund. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So, so that's true. Well, no, there was a lot of misinformation again in the beginning. It's just been all this, all this information rolling out and there's been some bad information and some misinformation um the stimulus that you're getting for twelve hundred dollars is a credit on your 2020 tax return so they're giving you this credit on your 2020 tax return they're just giving it to you early now there's you do not have to ever pay that back there if um, it's based on your income so let's say that you're married and you make less than $150,000 on your 2019 tax return. And that's kind of the cutoff before it starts to phase out. If you get $2,400 in stimulus based on your 2019 tax return, but in 2020, you make 200,000, so you don't qualify for that credit, but they've already paid it to you, you don't have to pay that back. On the flip side, if in 2019, your income was too high and you didn't qualify for the credit, in 2020 they'll look and say oh did you get any credit and if you didn't get it then you'll get it on your 2020. it does not net against your refund you don't have to pay it back um so it's almost like can you qualify based on your 19 or your 20. and so you want to okay. see you'll do that we'll do that calculation on the 2020 tax return so it's very important next year that we need to know did you get it how much did you get did you get a reduced amount so that we can, we'll have to reconcile that on their 2020 tax return, but you never have to pay it back. So if you get the money, it's yours to keep. Okay. That's good to know. I just had a client email me this morning. Well, not a client, but um, an adult child of a parent who had recently deceased oh. and a stimulus check had dropped into their dad's account and he's been gone for a couple of months here. What do mm -hmm. they do? 
you never have to pay it back. So that happens for deceased individuals too. If they, if they passed away in 2019, but they filed a 2019 return, or if they filed a 2018 even, they may have passed away in 2018. They are still sending those sim stimulus checks to the direct deposit info. And there's no, then there's no reconciliation in 2020. The money's theirs. So it's, it's their money. There's no paying it back. And so okay, I've, confirmed, that's good. I've, con yeah, I've confirmed that online with the IRS. So okay. at this point, there's no paying it back. Now, you know, you always want to preference everything with there's some things they haven't thought about and they've tried to roll this out really quickly. And that could change any day where they're going to say, well, if you accidentally got and someone was passed away, then you got to pay it back. But I don't see that happening because they're trying to just give people, they're trying to just get money out into the economy. Got it. Okay, good. Good to know. And at least in the law, usually if they've relied on rules or regulations at the time at that, that they make time, the decision, yeah. they get they get grandfathered in kind of. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, hopefully. Okay. okay, the next big set of questions that I'm getting <clears throat> that you're gonna give me some advice on uh -huh. is this uh, uh, the paycheck protection program loans yes. that um, small businesses are getting or um, even independent contractor clients that I have that, that really need this influx because they're out of work. What do you, what can you tell people about that, that um, may, they may not be reading on the internet? What are, what's the inside well, story? The biggest story today is the money's gone. The PPP oh. program money that they originally had funded is gone as of this morning. So if you have not applied, or if you've applied and been approved and did not get funded, the money's gone. Now in Congress, the next two days, they're trying to get additional funding into it. Um, they're playing a little bit of politics and so it's not going as quickly as it was before. Um, but if you have not received your money as of today, there's no more money. But well, that's not good news. Not good news. <laughs> However, you know, if they do, fund some additional money, you're gonna to wanna to try to get in line. So you still wanna apply and you still wanna to try to get in line, but they the money dried up really quickly. But the PPP, so there's kind of, um, there's the PPP program, which was based on your payroll as a company. So the, the Paycheck Protection Program is really just for businesses or self-employed folks. Um, there's also the EIDL, which was the disaster loans, which kind of ended up being a disaster for everybody um, on how they managed it. It was supposed to be a $10,000 just advance and it was supposed to be out within three days and it was a simple application. It never got funded. So the PPP program actually funded prior to the disaster loan. And now the $10,000 disaster loan, which I call a grant, um, nobody has received any money yet. And everybody now is receiving emails saying that it's not $10,000 anymore. Now it's limited to $1,000 an employee. I don't know how, so they've kind of changed the rules on it. And it's been, it's been very distressing a little bit. A lot of people were going to use that $10,000 as a gap before they got their PPP. And so we'll see what's going to happen now. You cannot double dip. So if you got any money, for EIDL, for that, you know, part of that $10,000, you have to net that against the PPP. So let's say you qualified for 50,000 under the PPP and you qualify as 10,000 under the EIDL, you don't get 60 grand, you get a total of 50. So if you've already received 50, then you get zero on the EIDL. It was supposed okay. to be the other way around where you got 10,000 on the EIDL and then if you qualified for 50 on the PPP, they would give you 40. Well, it kind of got backwards, and I don't know when they're going to fund those EIDL loans, grants mm -hmm. loans, you know, grants loans, yeah. whatever it's supposed to be. Um, what, what about people who are receiving unemployment? Tons of applications for unemployment. Mm -hmm. People are using that as a stopgap until they get called back to work. Yep. Um, any tax rules people should know about that? The only thing to remember about unemployment is it's taxable. So when you sign up for unemployment, you wanna make sure that you sign up for federal withholding, 
state withholding, and county withholding in, the, in Indiana. So unemployment's great. You've got, you've got the PPP program and the EIDL, which was really for businesses, and then unemployment was for employees. Now, if you're self-employed, you're, kind of, you're kind of straddling all those different programs. So if you're unemployed in Indiana, up until this week, if you applied online, it would deny you because Indiana has never allowed unemployed people to sign up for unemployment. Mm -hmm. Self-employed, I'm sorry. There's never allowed self-employed people to sign up for unemployment. Well, they just changed it to allow that, but the, the system wasn't ready for it. And so the system is now ready this week if you're self-employed. So unemployment's taxable, but it is for any employee. Now you may be a business owner. If you're a business owner of a corporation, you could apply for unemployment if you took a paycheck off your business. Not all business owners take a paycheck. That's kind of, it's kind of a little bit of a, a tricky area. What about the, um, those federal checks that are supposed to be coming to kick up unemployment, the $600 checks? What, mm -hmm. what are the rules about those? Same thing. It falls under the same program. If you sign up in Indiana, normally the max is $390. Well, Indiana will send you the $390 plus the 611. It all comes together in Indiana. In Indiana, it, each state is, um, managing that okay. okay so you almost you'll get one you'll kind of get one deposit into your account for unemployment for the state unemployment and the federal unemployment got it has the federal unemployment checks started yet have they started yes yeah okay so okay. those are going indiana's going and i know that you know the, the the websites the you know the programs were just overwhelmed but i think it's getting better and they're getting caught up um, it was like three hour waits for the, you know, to get to a person. I called the SBA one day and I was 1,208 on hold, but it went fast. I, I, got, I got through in about an hour. So it was, wow. <laughs> I thought, you know, I'm just gonna hold here until I find out how long, I just wanna see how long this takes. And it was, uh, it was about 50 minutes. So that was, I thought that was pretty good. And what's surprising, yeah. You know, you think most people are working from home, but what's crazy is all the banks have to be working for the PPP, all unemployment has to be working. You know, there's a lot of people that have to work to get these programs working, but you've got a country that's shut down. So, right. you know, I, it is frustrating, but it's, you know, actually pretty impressive what we've done with the world shut down. That's true. And, and, uh, we, I believe, will never be the same as far as how we discharge mm -hmm. work. And this disaster, complete disaster, in the long run, will have made us better and more productive and innovative as a country. Yeah. I truly do believe that. Yeah, and you know, I know all of my employees have gotten a lot better with Zoom. Even <laughs> last, last night, we did a birthday party over Zoom for, yeah. um, for one of my, um, grandkids and it was great it it was kind of cute we sang happy birthday over zoom and we had you know you had everybody across the country in a zoom meeting and tonight we're doing like a a women's networking group we're all having happy hour over zoom there you so go it's people are kind of adjusting we're adjustable people you know we understand it's so true it's if some if anybody has any additional questions how can they reach your office kim um, they can call us at 317-852-7000. We have a lot. We have been blogging and blogging and blogging. So if you go on our website, storeandfinancial.com, we have several newsletters, lots of blogs. We've been trying to send stuff out every day. Um, good articles that we see, um, trying to send those out as much as we can. Um, or you can always um, um, email us at storin at storeandfinancial.com. Perfect. Thanks for meeting me this morning, Kim. I appreciate it. Yeah. And really, if people should follow Applegate on their social media, they should follow us on social media because then you're getting information right away because on social media, just like you guys, we're sending it out as fast as we can get it. Yeah. And so yep. make sure you follow Applegate and follow us. Okay. Thanks, Kim. Have a great day. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Good to Bye. see you.